Hey, Sanjin, welcome to this special episode of the Blue Nature Alliance here on uh, the Blue Nature Alliance website and YouTube channel. Really appreciate you being here. I want, this is a, a really fun episode because we're going to get to know uh, who the people are behind the Blue Nature Alliance. And I'm really happy that you were able to spend a few minutes of your time to be able to kind of give us some background about yourself, your organization, and how you guys are contributing to uh, the Blue Nature Alliance. So why don't you just start off and just let us know who you are and what you do. Hi, Andrew. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, so I was born in Sri Lanka, an island in the Indian Ocean. So the oceans have always been sort of part of my life. And I have had the chance and the opportunity to really spend a lot of time in the oceans, uh, from the Arctic to the South Pacific, uh, you know, to the coast of East Africa. And I have a deep, deep love for the oceans. And I think a lot of people instinctively have this connection to the oceans. But over time, we have not done our job in terms of taking care and protecting the oceans. And that's what ultimately we're trying to write. Today, I have the privilege the, uh, of, of uh, leading Conservation International. It's a 1,500-person uh, organization that works in about 50 countries around the world with a very heavy focus on oceans. We've been doing it for about uh, 30 years, focusing our efforts on oceans. And we know we can't do it alone, which is what brings us to the Alliance. Love it. That is a wonderful introduction. Uh, such an, an inter interesting aspect growing up in Sri Lanka and being around the ocean all the time. It must have been uh, a great a, gr a great childhood to be exposed to to that kind of uh, lifestyle. So that's I, I'm very envious. <laughs> um, I, you know, you, you, you mentioned sort of what, like why, you know, why you love being part of this alliance. So how is uh, Conservation International contributing to the Blue Nature Alliance? So one of the things that most people don't know about Conservation International is that we're very, very heavy on the part partnership model. About 30% or more of the funding that we raise every year goes out the door directly to partners, often very small grassroots partners around the world. Because, see, we have this fundamental belief that the challenges of, in front of us cannot be accomplished on our own. And we have to do it together. Um, you know, it's taken the world, you know, something like, uh, you know, 35 years to protect about 7% of the oceans. And we're trying to protect 30% of it in the next few years. Um, so we really do have to work together, which is what makes this alliance so powerful. It's a fantastic group of partners. Um, CI and Pew Charitable Trust were the first two that kind of got involved in it. We were quickly joined by three others, the Rob and Melanie Walton Foundation, um, the Mindaroo Foundation from Australia, and the GEF, the Global Environmental Facility, which is a phenomenal sort of institution that funds biodiversity conservation around the world. So these five core founding partners really help guide the alliance and guide this partnership. Love it. I love uh, I love that idea. And and for you, like for, to be a part of this uh, Blue Nature Alliance, what does it make it? Why does it make it so special being a part of this alliance and, and for the organization, but for you especially? Well, I think there's two things on that. The first is that, you know, while CI has deep expertise in ocean conservation and the execution of projects around the world, we are always, always uh, stymied in terms of scale and in terms of places we can engage in by the capacities we have and the technical knowledge that we can bring to the table and of course resources. So being part of an alliance allows us to pool our collective knowledge. I need some help in on the far side of the world. Well, I call the Mindaroo Foundation. I get you know their support down there in Australia. That balance in terms of the foundation, in terms of the founding partners of it, really is what makes this alliance so exciting. The second thing is we have a very ambitious target, 18 million square kilometers of the ocean that we want to protect in a few years. That's effectively doubling what currently is under protection. That's a big goal, but it's only part of the goal on a race to get to about 30% of the oceans protected. You know, the oceans basically control the weather of this planet. They provide food for quite literally millions and millions of people around the world. They're an integral part of communities and they host the greatest biodiversity on the planet is found in some parts of our oceans. So our, our ignorance of it and ignoring it has been to our peril. And we just have to, we have no time to, to sort of uh, ponder anymore. We just have got, got to get out there and do it. 
that, that was an absolutely a wonderful answer. And, and it kind of leads me into my last question here is, um, you know, you mentioned sort of the 18 million square kilometers of, of what we're protecting, and we have to protect it, which ends up being 30% of the oceans by 2030. So how will protecting that, you know, that amount, that 30% by 2030, help people and nature? Scientists believe that without effective conservation protection and, and active management of a significant part of the oceans, we are at risk of unraveling the fabric of, of nature, of life, of infrastructure that holds our planet together. We're talking about the air we breathe, the food we eat, many of the jobs we, we, um, we have, and of course, the livelihoods of communities around the world who are deeply connected and dependent on the oceans. Thus far, the world has done a very poor job of protecting the ocean. It's a lot of out of sight is out of mind kind of philosophy. And we need to jumpstart that. So the scientists think that about 30% of the oceans must be in good conservation management. We're in a race to get there. What CI and the Blue Nature Alliance is contributing to is about 10% of that, basically doubling what we currently have as a way of stepping up to that 30%. Protecting that 30%, effectively managing it, ensures that the critical fabric of life, biodiversity, services that we depend on, our climate, has a chance to sustain our planet, has a chance to sustain humanity well into the future. Wonderful. You know, Sanjan, I want to just thank you for taking the time to to kind of let us get to know who you are and, and of course, uh, the con contribution that Conservation Asha is doing. And I just want to thank you for that work. Uh, I know it's not easy to do. I know this is, uh, you know, you've a lot of work ahead of you, you and the Blue Nature Alliance and, and your partners. And I want to thank you for everything that you've done so far today uh, and for all the work you're going to do in the future. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it.